I'm Jackson. Welcome to Family Friday on Marriage by Design. Hey, I'm Andrea. This is Nathan, and welcome to Family Friday. This is a show we do every Friday about God's design for family and how we are raising our kids. So you just met our son, Jackson. He's our oldest, and he's going to be the focus of our show today. But before we get into that, we want to talk about what the culture of our podcast is. Yeah, so Marriage by Design channel, this is the flagship. This is the, the opening month. Um, we're just pushing pushing it out the door. So we thought, before we get too far down the road in Marriage by Design, we wanted to give you guys just an idea of what the culture is going to be of this show. We won't probably talk about this every week, but for the first few weeks we'll probably revisit it just so everybody kind of has an idea of really what kind of what kind of culture we're wanting to have, what we want the DNA of the Marriage by Design channel to be. So there's really four things. Number one is we want everything we do on Marriage by Design to be steeped in the Bible, to be steeped in God's Word. We believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God that the Holy Spirit gave to human beings that lived during the times in history when he gave them those words, they wrote those down, and that the Bible is the word, actual word of God. And because of that, we're blessed now to have the entirety of God's word in the Bible to inform how we raise our families, how we live our marriages, uh, how we operate as men and women. And that's really what this channel is all about, is how do we take a deeper look at God's word and then apply that to our lives? Because God's Word, studying God's Word without allowing the Holy Spirit to transform your life is really mm. just, I'm not really sure what it is. It's like getting a doctorate in ancient literature. <laughs> um, but it's really the whole the power of the Holy Spirit that uses it to transform our lives. And that's really pillar number two, the transformation of the Holy Spirit. So everything we do on this channel we want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. From the topics, Andrew and I spend quite a bit of time praying over the topics that we do. We've asked you guys to submit topics to us, whether it's for Marriage Mondays or Family Fridays like today, or to Testosterone Tuesday, Women Power Wednesday. You know, any of those shows as you guys come across things where you think, man, I'd, I'd love to have some discussion about this. We'd love you to submit those things to us. But more than that, we want the Holy Spirit leading everything that we do here. Pillar number three is transparency. We ha try really hard to be transparent with you guys. As you'll see this month, if you tag along with us on Marriage Mondays, we were super transparent mm -hmm. about the things that went on in our marriage and the things we've come through, the things the Lord have done has done in our lives. So that transparency is important because this. I don't just want this channel to be about our family. Our family is not that interesting. No. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not just about, hey... Follow this family. <clears throat> I want it to be about how, as we're transparent, I hope you have a better realization that that thing that's going on in your family or that thing that's going on in your marriage and you feel like you're the only family on the planet that's dealing with this, you're not. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. And it's a lie that Satan likes to feed us because it gets us to isolate. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't want to talk about what's going on in my family because nobody else will understand. So we're trying to like... Throw it all out there mm -hmm. because I want you guys to recognize that we either are going through, have gone through, or at some point in this channel will go through uh, many of the things that you struggle with. And so we want to create kind of a family atmosphere here of just transparency. Um, and the final, the final pillar, the fourth pillar is um, we, want it, we want this to be interactive. Um, I don't want this to just be where we talk to the amorphous you that's mm -hmm. on the other end of this camera and we're just talking at you and then we say goodbye mm -hmm. i want back and forth um whether it's commenting down in the comments below if you're watching this on youtube sending us an email marriage by design podcast at gmail.com or looking us up on social media you can find us anywhere um, but we really want to have a conversation so that this isn't just us talking if you disagree with us on something fantastic let us know Right, we'd love to have some constructive back and forth with you on that as well for the glory of God. That's the biggest thing. You know, we want for Family Fridays, we want your family to be enriched because you jumped onto this show. Mm -hmm. um, because I know already our family has been yeah. from just us 
really working through what the Lord says about raising families. So those are the four pillars, steeped in God's word, led by the Holy Spirit. We're going to be transparent, and we want to be interactive. Cool? Great. Okay, so let's get into this month's series on Family Friday. So here's what we're doing this month. We have four children. There are four weeks in this month. Perfect. It works perfect. I did the math, carried the one. It's going to work perfectly. <clears throat> so what we're going to do each week this month, we're going to take a look at each one of our children. Right? From a little bit of a 10,000 foot view, right? They're young and they don't need me spilling out all their goods to a bunch of people that they don't even know. But what we really want to focus on is three things. We want to start each episode by focusing on, with regards to that particular child, what has the Lord shown us through raising that child about ourselves? Mm -hmm. Right? Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's not such a good thing. But what has the Lord shown us about ourselves as we've raised that child? The second thing we want to take a look at is, what has the Lord shown us about parenting as we've raised that child? So for each of our children... What's the Lord shown us about what it means to be a father, what it means to be a mother with regards to that child? And then finally, we're going to just talk a little bit about what the Lord has put on our heart to pray into that particular child. And and for me, and we didn't talk about this ahead of time, babe, so maybe you did it differently. But for me, I tried to nail down a specific verse mm -hmm. or, or series of verses mm -hmm. For each of our children where I really feel like, man, I want to pray this verse yep. over them. Now, what? why do you care about that? I'm betting as you hear us describe some of our children, a number of you out there will be like, yeah, that reminds me of my son, my daughter. And so I kind of want, again, to be transparent with you as we talk about our kids and encourage you. Um, and maybe it may be a good exercise for you to sit down either yourself or with your spouse and think about, then what verses can we be? praying over our kids, or man, Nate and Andrea's kids are a wreck, so we can feel really better about our kids. They're not. They're not a wreck. Three, um, out, three out of the four aren't a wreck, but I'm not going to tell you which one. Uh, they're normal kids. No, they're normal kids. That's great, and we love them. So that's what we're going to do for this month. So babe, maybe, do you want to kick it off? Yes. <clears throat> so we're going to start with things that we have learned about ourselves, that the Lord's shown us about ourselves by raising each of our kids. Now, before we jump right into that, why don't you just tell us a little bit about Jackson? Yeah, so Jackson's our first. He's he's the oldest of our four. He's 10 years old, and he he's a great kid. He's definitely a leader, and I think that comes partially from being firstborn, partially yeah. from being the son of Nathan. Um, you know, he, he's very into... <clears throat> whatever Nathan's into. <laughs> but sometimes he has to be a contrarian. Sure. So he loves video games and he loves board games and he loves spending time with his dad for sure. Lots of time, as much time as he can. And he is very social. Um, he has lots of friends and loves being around friends mm. that really charges him up. Mm. He is I uh, he is controlling in some ways. Sure. He likes people to do the things do things the way he wants them done and his siblings don't like that all the time. <laughs> He's he his siblings are starting to get to the age where they realize Hey, when we play pretend, I don't have to do the things that you're telling me to do. I have my own thoughts, you know. So <laughs> he, he can be controlling sometimes. He likes things the way he likes them. He he um, is very, I've noticed this a lot lately. He's very into whatever he's into in the moment. So, so his thoughts about what he wants to be when he grows up or what he wants to do right now or uh, what he's really into right now change like that, but he's really into it for the moment that he's into it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, yeah go ahead. So, so, so perfect example of this is if you listen to our, to our episode on Monday, you know this podcast has been brewing in our hearts for a long time. Yes. 
So we finally said, all right, we're doing it. And we got the lights, we got the set, we got the all that stuff. And now Jackson's decided <laughs> he wants to do a podcast. Right. And so he's brainstorming ideas. And every time he talks about it, it's like, so you, you know, I've been I've been thinking about this for a really long time. Yes. I'm like, I, like since lunch? Because <laughs> it's changed. Right. <laughs> Right. So that is kind of that is kind of where he's and at. Which is what will probably happen is that he's a dreamer. He, he is. He'll do a couple of them and then you know that's it'll right. it'll fade away. That's right. So he is a dreamer. Totally. Yep. That's right. And some things stick and some things don't. But he's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of of um, you know he's not one to really sit around for very long. I love that about him. Yeah. He likes to be outside, and he's into sports. He enjoys baseball and soccer, but he likes soccer better, unfortunately for Nathan. <laughs> but he does. He loves he loves sports and being outside. Yep. He's a great kid. He's a great firstborn. He's pretty classic firstborn. Mm-hmm. If you've never, if you have kids... And you've never read the birth order book by, yeah. ugh, I think his last name is Lehman, but don't quote me on that. It's a really great book. Yeah. And I think Jackson fits really, really pretty well into that firstborn peg. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. I don't know anything else you would add about him? Um, well, he's not perfect, so maybe, maybe without being specific about like specific incidences, what are some things you think Jackson struggles with right now? So he struggles with consistency. So yeah. he he knows what he needs to do consistently, but he struggles to do it consistently. Sure. For example, making his bed every day. <laughs> Remember, we weren't going to go spin oh, specifics. Oh, shoot, darn it. Well, for example, some things that you do every day. No. Uh, <laughs> he, but... You know, there's there's things that he needs to do that he knows that he needs to do, but he just doesn't get them done consistently. Sure. So he can struggle with that. He can struggle with telling the truth. Sure. Uh, which is very normal for kids. How's he at finishing things? And he's terrible at finishing things. Just, it's just the truth. I'm sorry, Jackson, if you ever watch that. It's the truth. But you are going to overcome that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And look, at some of these things are 10-year-old Thanks. Totally. Right. I mean, we, we talk about these things with other people that have kids, and, and a lot of them go, I, I that's a 10 year old thing, right? Because right. now I have a 16 year old and he's moved on from that, or maybe that thing's gotten worse, right? Depending on the people you talk to. So, so I'm not, I just, I wanted to give you guys kind of an idea of where we're at so that you kind of know what, what where we're, where we're coming from. Yep. And he so, likes to complain a lot, but he is working hard at overcoming that. That's right. And that's been, that's right. That's improved a lot. That's right. Yeah. yeah, and I will say that's a that's a positive thing for him. A lot of these things that we point out, it might take him a while, but he he does recognize Truly, them and starts yes. trying to like get that get that put back. Together, right, and so. some of that is because he recognizes this is not the character of person that he wants to be. So sure. he's so he understands that. That's right. So I'm going to ask you a bonus question because something that you said triggered this for me. Jackson was a pretty big mama's boy for the first few years of his life. Um, yes. And then that took a hard left turn. Mm. Um, and you're right. He and I are like peas in a pod. Peas in a pod. For, and and I and for and I'm that's awesome and I love that. But I also know he's coming up on some older years here in which point he'll be probably more interested in other stuff than me and then that'll come back and that's great. But my question for you is how do you deal with not being the favorite mm-hmm. in a period of time because there may be some people out there that think man this that really saddens me or I really struggle mm-hmm. with that how do you how do you handle that it does hurt sometimes to know I'm not the favorite it hurts sometimes when during nap time and our other children are either doing quiet time or napping and I'm like hey Jackson do you want to play a game with me I know that if it was Nathan asking he'd be all about it but most of the time he'd be all about it. But if it's me asking, I don't get a yes as often mm-hmm. as Nathan would because he wants to go play with his friends. Um, that's Sometimes that that gets in there. So it can be hard and it can be hurtful, but there's a 
good side to that too in that I know that he he looks up to and loves a man that's that could not be better for him to look up to and love. Mm. So so there's a good side to it too. That mm. He's learning to be a man and act like a man. And he's learning what it means to be a man of God from a great example. Mm. And so for his favorite to be somebody that's in my opinion better at at, at exemplifying all of those mm. you know the Christian life to Jackson than I am is is great. So mm. so so there's a, a great thing about it too. But it, but yeah it, it does hurt and at times. Um but He's also very sensitive towards me. Yes, he is. So he recognizes when I'm... And I'm, I don't just mean when he, like, accidentally hurts my feelings. But when I'm struggling with something or I'm sad or whatever, he's very sensitive towards me and, and will ask me about it and give me hugs and he'll pray for me. So yeah, there's that side of it, too, that he that we have our own thing as well. And he's, and he's good to, it's good. you know, just give me random hugs sometimes or, or want to have a conversation with me instead of you. So, you know. It's great. A, yeah, it's, it's good. good. It's good. All right, babe. Mm-hmm. Well. Yes. Why don't you launch in? Sure. So first thing we're going to talk about is. Things I've learned about myself through Excellent. Jackson. Excellent. Very good. So what do, you, what do you have? Maybe we'll go back and forth. Sure. Okay, perfect. Go for so it. So my number one would be, I'm not a natural at being a mom. And mm-hmm. I learned that very quickly after having Jackson. I learned this does not come naturally for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was hard for me to wrap my head around because I always thought it would. And I felt so inferior as a mom because it didn't. And I felt no connection or very little connection with Jackson for quite a long time after I had him. And I was just going through the motions, just doing the motherhood thing because that's what I needed to do. Mm. And and I felt like it was sort of a fake it till you make it with some things in regards to to loving him. And it wasn't a him thing. It wasn't Jackson. It was because of me. And... And for a lot of reasons or whatever reason, I didn't have it. I didn't have that, you know, natural motherhood thing that mm. came alive when I had Jackson. So I learned that about myself. Uh, and and that has changed dramatically. Mm. So what would you say to a mom that's watching this? Or, or I suppose a dad, but, but generally you see this particularly with moms that have had a child and maybe... Maybe they're maybe they have a baby. Maybe their child's getting a little bit older, but they really feel a sense of guilt or a sense of regret or condemnation because you know that whole mm. they had the labor, the baby's handed up in their arms, and they didn't have that. Oh. Ah, right. It was just like okay, well now there's a baby. Yeah. Right. Well, because we don't talk about that a lot, but I, we know from our from talking to other people in our sphere of influence. That's a that's a fairly regular thing it that is. happens, and it's almost like no one can talk about right. it because what is wrong with you? Right. That's that's the feeling. That's the key, though, is talk about it. Talk mostly and first to the Lord about it. He knows already. So pour your heart out, and if your heart is, I don't even like this kid. I don't. I don't. Get this mothering thing. Whatever you're feeling, pour your heart out because God knows it already. And then seek help. Some of it may be a postpartum depression. Some of it may be baby blues. Some of it may be that you just need some wisdom in your life on what it means to be a mom or uh, even some some prayer covering on some of those things. Yeah, for for, sure. for me, some of it was not all of it, but some of it was... My selfishness really came out when I had a child because now all of the selfish things that I want to do are I can't do anymore. Mm. So, um, so yeah, don't hide it and bury yeah. it. It's a good call. Great call. What was your so 
what was it? What was something that you learned? Yeah. So the first thing that I learned, it's it's actually interesting that bonus question that I asked you about how do you how do you handle that? And you talked about him really looking at me as a role model. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing that I learned about that I have learned, and the Lord continues to teach me about myself with regards to Jackson is what it means to be a role model. Mm-hmm. You know, when I read through the Bible and you read like in the epistles, Paul and how Paul agonized over these churches that he had founded. And, you know, he would write them letters from forever away. And and, and not to get into the details, but the letter writing, it wasn't just, he didn't just sit down and write a letter, right? You hired people. Then you hired someone else to transcribe it. Then you hired someone to deliver it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was an expensive and time-consuming process to send a letter. And yet he'd be in a place and he couldn't, there was no, he was just, I can't, yeah, it's great that I'm here, but but what about those people over there that I'm not with right now? Are they okay? Have they continued seeking after the Lord? It was this, it was this heart of wanting to mentor and disciple those people. And for him, a big part of it was showing them the way, right? Act the way that I act. Let me show you what it means to be a follower of Christ. And man, God's really been showing me the impact of being a role model for another person um, because you're right I mean Jackson looks up to me a ton and it's and it's easy to be really flattered by that but I'll be honest f- for me oftentimes it can be I'm not generally someone that struggles with a lot of anxiety like that's the Lord's just blessed me in that area that that's not generally something that I struggle with praise the Lord but when I do, that's like one of the main things I struggle with is, is, okay, I know he looks up to me and I know I've got some glaring flaws mm. as a man, as a father, as certainly as a husband. And those things are on display, mm. right? I mean, he's, he's there to see him when Andrea and I have a fight and I say something stupid or, you know, I get angry at him or one of the other kids or treat them wrongly. And, you know, he's getting to the age where I see not just some of those really good qualities of myself in him, but I see some bad qualities oh, of and myself Oh, and you know it comes from him. you. Yes, right. that, I feel that too. Right, and so so that kind of sounds like a downer, but what I've learned from that is it really comes back to I better take my relationship and walking with the Lord really seriously. Mm-hmm. Because for me, it doesn't take very long of disconnect from the Lord before my anger starts Mm -hmm. increasing, my patience starts dropping, and that's bleeding out on everyone around me, Mm -hmm. you know, you and the kids. And Mm -hmm. so, and he sees that, and then he he does that himself. So that's what I learned, what it it looks like to be a role model, and I continue to learn that as he gets older. Mm -hmm. So the second thing I learned in Parenting Jackson is that (laughs) motherhood is... The number one way that Satan uses to get at me. Mm. And I I have said it a lot that motherhood is a guilt trip for me. Every Almost everything I can feel guilty about. And it's just, for whatever reason, it's, it's the number one way that Satan uses to just pick at me. Mm. And to make me feel... Like I, I don't measure up, I'll never measure up. I'm, I'm, you know, failing, I'm going to cause so many problems for these kids and all that sort of thing. And while there are definitely things that I need to grow in and do better at, uh, as a mom, my, that enormous guilt and weight and, uh, like my, my value is, severely I I feel like my value as a mom often is cut because Mm. of the way I I parent or my mistakes Mm. in parenting or whatever and and so I've learned that motherhood is the easiest way for Satan to get into my thoughts and my you know create kind of the crazy cycle of thoughts Mm. for me it's good so the good thing of recognizing it is that then I know where to battle that at. It's great. And sharing that. 
right? I mean, if you're a, a, a dad or a mom that struggles in that area, admit that mm-hmm. to your spouse because that actually gives your spouse an opportunity to minister to you in mm-hmm. that area and encourage you in the great things you do as a mom. And you're an incredible mom. Yes. Um, so thank you for sharing that with me so that I know mm-hmm. um, and can, can build you up in that area. So for me, the second thing is, now, if, if you're listening along in Marriage Monday, and please do, that you'll know very quickly that I have a severe flaw with pride and selfishness. And parenting... Jackson, specifically because Jackson was the first, Mm -hmm. really highlighted that Mm. in my life. And so for me, um, it has highlighted the importance of being humble as a parent. And the biggest part of that, the biggest way that plays out for me is humbling myself to be able to go to Jackson and our other children and admit one, that sometimes we don't know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And two, ask for forgiveness mm-hmm. when we do something that's wrong. Or ask for forgiveness when I do something to you that's wrong and he witnesses it. right? Or apologize to you all in an equally public way so that he can witness that. So having humility in parenting is the second thing that I have mm-hmm. really had to work on in my own life and continue to have to work on. There's tons of times when I do something that's wrong and I have to sit and wrestle with the Lord about whether or not I need to go apologize or or not. And okay. usually when I'm in that position, that means I need to go apologize. Right, so, exactly. Yeah. So that was my second one, humility in, in parenting. Great. So then this next part that we're talking about is the two things that we've learned about parenting from Parenting Jackson, right? Right. All right, so what's your first? So my first one is clarity. I called it clarity avoids cruelty. So the thing about Jackson Mm -hmm. is if you're not incredibly clear with him. Very, very, very clear. That kid is a lawyer in training. As are lots of kids, you probably have some yourself at home. And so often, what I want him to hear is the spirit of my (laughs) instruction and not the instruction. Right. And the thing that I've realized as I've gotten older is that really is a destroyer of relationship. That not being clear. And that means for parenting, part of that is not always thinking on the fly. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, there's a lot of times where something happens and you want to react right now. Maybe not even like out of anger or anything like that. You just you go, okay, I didn't anticipate this thing. We got to make a rule about this and we're doing it right now. Mm -hmm. And with two seconds of thought and you say something and then you're aggravated because your child is finding little loopholes. And then you go back and go, well, that's not what I meant. You can't do that either. Or you're in trouble because even though you did that thing that technically wasn't what I said, didn't you know that that's what I meant? And I think that that's, one, it's cruel. And two, it really, I think it really hurts your relationship and your moral authority as a parent. Because Mm -hmm. from your child's standpoint, and, and I'll use Jackson as an example, he wants to do right by us. But he also wants to do whatever he wants to do. Mm-hmm. And so if he sometimes. can if he can balance those two things, and if you do the Venn diagram, if there's any little area in the middle where he can technically please us and be obedient and do what he wants to do, he'll find it. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times I feel like I come down on him as his dad for that. And I look back and I think, you know, that, that probably wasn't 100% fair. Mm-hmm. Because I probably wasn't clear with him up front. Mm-hmm. And he's not me. So he, he doesn't know the spirit of the Yeah, he's the not rule. in your head. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yep. That's right. So cruelty, uh, avoid it. Uh, sorry, we'll do that too. <laughs> but unclarity, you know, not being clear, avoid that at all costs. And that may mean that sometimes you need to say, you know what, I need to think about this situation Let's come back together tomorrow morning. Or I need to sit down with your mom. I need to sit down with your dad and talk about this situation. Let's get back together tomorrow and talk about this when I can be really clear about what the expectation mm-hmm. is. My first first thing on this list is learning that there are so many different ways to parent well. And 
we know lots of examples of people who parent well. Mm-hmm. But my first and main source of wisdom and parenting should be the Lord. Yeah, that's right. So that that's one of the biggest things I've learned from parenting Jackson is because he came first. Something that may work for this family may not work for us. And I shouldn't, as parents, we shouldn't always be looking for what's the, what's the solution? What's the solution? What's the solution? Instead it should be, God, what's the solution? Because you know this child better than anybody on this earth knows this child because you are the creator of this child. And so my, my first source of wisdom and knowledge in how to parent specifically for this one is you. And yes, it's good. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying not, see, not don't ever seek wisdom from people. You know, from no, people that you, you should know. do that. You should, but but your first and main source of of wisdom and power to parent and all that should be from the Lord, from the Creator of this child. So that's been my biggest, you know, parenting. Um, yeah. That's parenting good. tip or whatever that I that I've learned from that's really Jackson. good. You know, it's, sometimes we society can get obsessed with these books about parenting or you know people about podcasts about parenting. You know, people can get Shut obsessed. Shut down. We're pe- done. <laughs> people can get obsessed with these things, and they become a replacement right. for just going right, right. And to be. the Lord. And yeah, you're right. That's a mistake for sure. Excellent. Well, the second thing for me that the Lord has taught me about parenting is our children are more resilient than you think they are. Mm -hmm. And I say that specifically with regards to how much I beat myself up with Jackson, particularly early on, because as you'll see in, in marriage Monday, I very nearly walked out on my wife and my son, Jackson, whom you met when he was two. Um, Very, I mean, it was, it was, we were in a bad way. Um, and the Lord brought us through it, and there's a huge redemption story there, so go check that out on, on Marriage Mondays this month. But I really struggled coming out of that with, okay, have I destroyed my son? Um, and he was young, so praise the Lord. A lot of that, he, he did, I mean, not he all of it. Of he it. doesn't remember a thing of it. And someday I will sit down with him when he's older, and I will talk about it with him because I want him to know my failings in the hopes that he will take, you know, relationships with women that God brings into his life in the future much more seriously and be much more prepared for those relationships than I was. But the thing that I've realized is when I screw up, when I yell at him or I do some, treat him unfairly or I ignore him and crush his spirit or I, Just do any of those things that disrespect him and hurt him. And I do those things far more than I wish I did. What I realize is the power, one, of an apology, which I talked about with humility, and two, how quickly our kids overcome that when they see that that's not truly the relationship that we desire to have with them, mm. right? The, that resilience of, you know, I see a lot of times with adults, you don't say hi to me at church on Sunday morning, I'm not talking to you for six months, mm. right? For Jackson, I can lose my temper and yell at him and come back 15 minutes later. And even if I don't apologize in the moment, which sometimes I don't and I should, but even if I don't and I'm like, hey, Jackson, you want to, you know, play a game? He'll kind of look at me for a minute and then he'll go, yeah, let's play a game. And we can move on in our relationship and there's healing there. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with repentance, that just speeds that up. But there's something about the grace the Lord gives in the parent-child relationship. And, guys, you can see this even in non-Christian relationships. I mean, how many boys or girls whose mom or dad are maybe, like, real bad? Right? Like, don't care about them at all, have walked out, don't want any relationship, or have an abusive relationship, and yet those kids, man, they're willing to forgive them and, and for anything, right? right. Any excuse right. to forgive them. There's something about that relationship where that relationship is more resilient than you think. So when Satan creeps in and he says, 
you just yelled at your son, he's going to hate you for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. Because God has built some grace into that relationship. It's a resilient relationship. Great. My second one is pretty similar to that, actually. So we didn't talk about these before before the show. But my second one is realizing I, I have learned how important it is to ask for forgiveness. Mm. And I have learned better how to forgive because of Jackson. So, so like Nathan was talking about, Jackson and kids in general are so quick to forgive. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when we lose that or when that starts fading into being harder to forgive people and, and taking on bitterness and all that sort of thing. But I don't see that in children. They're quick to forgive. And, and I love that. And it's, I've realized how important it is as a parent to admit that I'm wrong. Yeah. And that, that then in turn helps them to be okay with admitting when they're wrong. Yeah. Not all the time. They still struggle with that, just like I struggle with it. But but it helps like to see mom's not always perfect and she admits it. Mm-hmm. And so I can be free to admit it when I'm not perfect too. Yeah, that's right. And then and then um disp- um be an example of of how to apologize. Mm-hmm. correctly to mm-hmm. somebody how to ask for forgiveness so when Jackson was young we started asking for forgiveness in a way that we feel um, is helpful in restoring a relationship so when I for example when I apologize to Jackson I say Jackson I'm sorry for whatever I'm sorry for yelling at you that was wrong will you please forgive me and I'm admitting I was wrong I'm saying I'm sorry for it. I'm owning it. And I'm asking for his forgiveness. I'm asking for him to come into that and take a part in that too. And he can, he could say, I don't forgive you. He never once has never. He always says, yes, I forgive you. And, and as children of the Lord, that's our responsibility is to always forgive. It may not be immediately, but it's always our responsibility to forgive. And it should be, it should be quick. Um, but his, but his response is, I forgive you. And he's always quick to do that. And just like mm-hmm. Nathan was saying, he's quick to move on from it too. Yep. And so for so one of the things that I've learned from parenting and parenting Jackson is the importance of not trying to make my kids think that I know it all, that I do it all right, yeah. or that I don't have anything to apologize for. That's good. But to, but to instead let them know I'm not perfect. I don't always I don't always know what I'm doing and I get it wrong and I want when I do get it wrong I want to restore our relationship. No. I want you to know I was wrong. Don't copy me in this. That was wrong. And I want to restore relationship. It's good. And they're so quick to to want to jump into that with you. It's great. Great. So the final piece we want to do for Jackson and we'll do for each of the kids this month is what's one thing that the Lord's given you to pray over Jackson as he mm-hmm. gets older. A lot of what's in Proverbs 3, 7, which says, Be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. Mm. I think maybe as a firstborn, it can be temp- uh, tempting to feel like I know it all. Mm. I know more than everybody, all the other sure. kids in my family. Sure. And... So I want Jackson to never think that wisdom comes from him at all, but it comes from the Lord. And so to not be prideful in in the wisdom that the Lord gives him, to not allow that to uh, sidetrack him, what you know, what he knows, what he doesn't know, how cool that is. Nope. But instead, to just seek the wisdom of the Lord for the Lord's glory, and then um, to always turn away from evil, to desire. To desire to quickly leave anything that's tempting. That's great. Yeah. It's awesome. That's great. For, for me, it, it comes back to Joshua 1, 9. For me, which says, Have I not commanded you? Be mm-hmm. strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever, wherever you, you go. go. Mm-hmm. And I think of that for Jackson because although Jackson... Or, or as a firstborn, Jackson has a tendency, as a lot of firstborns do, to be a little tentative on things that he 
doesn't know, mm. right? So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I, for a long time, I thought Ryan, our second born, was going to be the first one of the two to go on a roller coaster. <laughs> <clears throat> because he was like, I don't know about all this, right? And he's now gotten over that. His courses, he's gotten older, and, and he's gotten more into that. But I feel like, man, I just want to keep praying over him. Remember, the Lord's with you wherever you go. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, but be strong and courageous, Mm -hmm. right? This world needs strong and courageous young people who are willing to stand up for what's right, even in the face of, of overwhelming temptation and overwhelming, um, draw away from the Mm -hmm. Lord. So being a man of strength and courage is what I pray over Jax. Great. So that's great. Hey, we'd encourage you guys do pray scripture over your kids. I mean, don't just pray for their lives and what's going on in them, but talk about it together as a couple and pick out a verse for your kids and pray it over them. And it may change as seasons change, but but always be praying that scripture over our kids. I think there's something magical about that. So awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Really appreciate you being here. Remember, we've got you know, write in the diary tomorrow morning, and then we've got a brand new week of shows for you. Week number two of the Marriage Woo. by Design podcast starting next week. Thanks, guys, so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. Hey, thanks for joining us on Marriage by Design. If you were impacted by this video, like it by hitting the thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And once you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes release. Excellent. Also, one of the huge pillars of our show is interactivity between us and you. So we would love you to comment down in the comments below if you have thoughts about this video or if you have questions or other things you'd like to like to see considered in the future. In addition, if you'd like, you can email us. That's marriagebydesignpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram at marriagebydesignpodcast or you can find us on Facebook by searching Marriage by Design Podcast. Finally, if you want to, you can tweet at us. We do have a Twitter account that is at MarriageXDesign. Thanks, and have a great day.